Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Tim from Timber Ridge Gifts and this is the tips and tricks video. Now in the intro I would have liked to have been able to list all the tips and tricks that I'm going to show you in the video but it's kind of a work in progress. I went ahead and decided to go ahead and do the intro. I've got four or five other videos that I'm going to tack on to it but I'm probably not done yet. I'm just going to keep going and just as things come up while I'm in my regular process that I think might want to be passed on I'll make a quick uh, tips and tricks video and add it to this video. So I probably won't actually post this one for a while. I'm just going to kind of do bits and pieces as I go. And hopefully by the time it's, you know, said and over with, it'll be a nice long video full of lots of tips, lots of tips and tricks. Um, let me say, I'm by no means an expert. Um, you might see something in the video that you think you've already got a handle on or have a better way of doing it. That's great. Um, you know, I'm definitely not an expert, but I do run a successful candle shop. I've been doing this for a while. Um, I have learned a few things on the way, so I thought, might be kind of nice to pass them on to somebody else. That's really the only way that we learn. Um, none of us picked up a uh, big box of supplies and decided we're going to be candle experts one day. Uh, we got on YouTube, we got on Google, checked what, checked out what everybody else was doing, learned what we could, then set out on our own shops and went through our trial, went through our trial and error. So hopefully in this video you'll see something that hasn't occurred to you and will help you in your shop. Let's check out the first tip. Okay, for this first tip, I'm going to show you how to get your color just exactly right. Now, if you're making soy candles, it's relatively easy, but you're going to find that getting your color just right is one of the hardest things. If you're just making them for yourself and you're not too worried about the color, it's not that big of a deal. But if you're making them to sell, if you've got them listed online somewhere, if you're going to resell them, consistency is pretty important. Uh, right now, we're making my riding mower candle. It's a pretty popular candle of mine. I've uh, restocked it several times. I've got several repeat customers, so they expect it to be about the same every time they buy it. Okay, we've already got our wax melted down. We've already got our color added. Now, I've got the measurements that I used last time, so it's fairly easy for me, but I still want to double check it just to make sure. Uh, you'll find with the wax that it's going to be a lot darker in its liquid form. It's going to dry a lot lighter. So just looking at it right now, I can't tell what the finished color is going to be. Um, the uh, wax dye I use does have a color guide on it. Kind of an easy reference, but we're going to show you this trick and it's going to make your life a lot better. A lot better. So all we're going to do, we've got the wax melted down, we've got our color added. All we're going to do is just take a little clear, clear plastic container Just gonna dip that out about that much. That's gonna go in the freezer for about five to 10 minutes. That'll freeze, go to its solid form and you'll be able to tell exactly what the color is. Now, while you're waiting for that to freeze, <clears throat> your wax is okay to sit. Um, we don't have the fragrance oil added yet. So we've got just the wax and the color dye. So we can just let it sit, we can turn it off and reheat it or we can set the temperature to about a mid-range. I usually do about 165, 170. It's not going to hurt anything. As long as you don't get it too hot, you're not going to scorch the wax. Like I said, I don't have the fragrance oil added in yet, so I don't have to worry about burning it off. So we've let that freeze. Get it out of the freezer. And there we go. We've got the perfect color without even having to try. Okay, so I mentioned in one of my earlier videos how it's important to measure your fragrance oils by weight rather than volume. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. You can see we've got two fragrance oils from the same company. These are both from Rustic Essentials. It's Red Maple Leaf and Toasted Marshmallow. These are the 8-ounce fragrance bottles. As you can see by looking at them, it appears that there's more in the uh, Red Maple Leaf than there is the Toasted Marshmallow. but I'm gonna show you that there's not. Now, if you were to measure it by volume using one of these, your measurements are gonna be off because we've got the toasted marshmallow, eight ounce bottle, 9.15 ounces. That's accounting for the plastic bottle itself. It looks like there should be more in the red maple leaf just by looking at it, but 9.15 ounces. So they're both the same weight, 
So if you measure by volume rather than weight, your measurements are going to be off. So get you a scale, measure by weight. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our candles poured. And we've overfilled one quite a bit. I'm going to show you a nice, easy way to clean that up. If you were to try to re-pour that or tip that up and pour it into another container, you're just going to make a huge mess. So I'm going to show you an easy way to fix this. All you're going to need is one of these. This is a kitchen syringe or a kitchen injector or a meat injector. You can get these at Walmart. I think it was about six or seven dollars. All we're going to do, just dry out the excess wax till we get it down to the level we want it at. There you go, and that candle's saved. Now we can add this to another lower candle or another neat trick with it. We can use this on the uh, smaller molds that are hard to fill. If you were to try to fill that with a pouring pitcher, you're just going to make a huge mess. But with this, we can fill it up to the perfect level every time. Do need to add that if you're going to use one of these, this is only going to work on a uh, on a soy wax. If you were to try, try to use this with a, a, a blend or a paraffin or a gel wax, it's going to clog up on you and it's going to be almost impossible to clean out. So only for soy on this one. Okay, so if you've done any type of candle making, I'm sure you've heard the expression, the fragrance load. A lot of people call this the fragrance percentage. Basically, it's just the amount of fragrance oil that you add to your melted wax to get the uh, desired load. Um, it can pretty much be anything you want it. There is certain uh, maximum amounts that you can put in uh, just refer to the type of wax that you're using a lot of times on the packaging it'll show you the uh, the maximum amount of fragrance load that it'll hold but basically it goes like this um, just bear with me I'm not the greatest at math um, I'm a police officer but I use a lot of math uh, my fiance is the accountant she can probably breeze through this a lot better than I can but it's a pretty simple equation so I'm sure I'll be able to get through it basically you're just going to take the uh, amount of wax that you're using, the uh, desired fragrance load percentage that you want. Just multiply those two together and that'll give you the ounces of fragrance load that you need. I've got the examples down here so basically it's gonna go like this. We'll just use uh, 16 ounces as a good example. So we've got our 16 ounces of uh, wax. We want a 10% uh, fragrance load. Anytime you're multiplying uh, percentages you're just gonna move the decimal point two places to the left Again, that's the best explanation I can give you for multiplying percentages. I'm not a math guy, but that's just easy to remember. So if it's 10%, just move the decimal place two points to the left. So that gives us 0.10. So 16 ounces times 0.10 gives us 1.6 ounces. That's 1.6 ounces of fragrance load. One thing to keep in mind, if you're making an exactly an exact size of 16 ounces, once you add all that together, that's going to give you 17.6 ounces of actual product in your pouring pot. So if you've only got a six ounce con con or a 16 ounce container, you're going to have an ounce and a half of waste, basically, unless you've got something else for it to go into. So you can play with the equation a little bit to figure out exactly how much you're going to need. So if we have a 16 ounce container, um, just did a quick math in my head, we can use 14.5 ounces of wax. For our 10% fragrance load, that's 1.45 ounces of fragrance oil. And that, and in our pouring pot, that gives us a total product weight of 15.95 ounces. So it's just something to watch just if you want to keep down your waist. Fragrance oils can get pretty expensive. So if you need a 16 ounce candle, you end up with an ounce and a half that you can't use. It's going to cost you money. So just play with that equation. Like I said, it's not hard. It's Once again, it's just the uh, amount of wax you have times the uh, desired percentage that you want and that gives you the uh, total weight that you're going to need of your fragrance oil. Hope that helps. Okay, if you've done any kind, any kind of candle making already or research on candle making, you've likely either seen or read about frosting. Well, that's a perfect example of what it is. Basically what's happening is as the uh, fragrance oil and the soy wax solidify and combine on the molecular level of the soy and the uh, fragrance oil want to form these little white crystals 
It's basically the soy returning back to its natural straight natural state with the infusion of the uh, fragrance oil molecules it ends up looking like this. Now this doesn't affect the uh, the smell of the candle at all. It doesn't affect the performance of it. Just strictly cosmetic. But if you're selling colored candles it can be pretty irritating because that definitely doesn't look like what you want it to look like in your shop. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of candle shops won't even make colored candles just because they don't want to deal with this issue. I found that some things you can do to uh, minimize the effects of frosting, but there's really no way, surefire way that I found to prevent it. Um, if you checked a uh, hundred different candle blogs, uh, you'd come up with a hundred different answers. A lot of people will tell you to only stir it a certain direction, stir it so many times, stir it in a figure eight, uh, add your fragrance oil at this temperature, pour at this temperature. Um, some will tell you to pour hotter than others to reduce it. Some will tell you to pour colder than others to do it. I've seen one that told you to pour so cold that it was almost like you, your wax had already started to solidify in the pouring pot. So you're basically pouring out these chunks of wax into your candle. It was kind of messy. It didn't really seem to help any. Um, <clears throat> some blogs will tell you you can use a stearic acid. I've used that a couple times. It seemed to help a tiny bit, but stearic acid... If you don't get it just right, it'll actually affect the uh, cold and hot center of your candle. So it's kind of a trade-off. Do you want the looks or do you want your candle to actually perform? And with stearic acid, I mean, your measurements have to be exact down to the down to the milligram. If you add too much, it'll affect it. If you add too little, it'll affect it. It's, it's weird. But we're going to show you how to fix it real quick. There's a real simple fix. It's not going to cost you any extra. It takes a little bit of time. And it'll bring your candle back to its original state of how you want it to look when you're going to sell it to a customer. So let's check that out. <clears throat> this is my 8 ounce gunpowder gun powder candle. I've actually got a couple of these going out in an order, in an order later today. Uh, as you can see, the frosting really did a number on this one. Now when I poured these and when they cooled, they looked great. Just over time, it seems no matter what you do, if the candle sits long enough, it's going to do this unless you do something to fix it before you ship it. Uh, this one's actually frosted so bad you can barely see the, uh, the original gray that it was. It's almost frosted over white to the point where it kind of looks like it's supposed to be that way. And I could probably pass it off and they would never know the difference. It would work great. But it's listed in this color, so that's the color that I want it to be when I send it to the customer. Now in my uh, equipment video, you have seen that I had the, uh, the heat gun. This is what I use this for to get rid of the frosting. It only takes a minute, a few minutes after that, to let your candle re-solidify. It's as good as new, it looks great, and it's ready to go out to the customer. You can see what the frosting does to the top, if the lighting will show it on this video. Once again, it does not affect the candle at all, it doesn't affect the, uh, the feel of it, the smell of it, just mainly affects the look of it. So what you're gonna wanna do, and what you're gonna wanna be careful of when you're heating this, you can actually remelt this entire candle. You don't want that. Basically, you're just gonna to wanna to do it very lightly on the outside of the jar. You're basically just heating up the jar. You'll see once we get going, all those little uh, crystal and air bubbles will start releasing, floating up to the top. You just wanna do the whole jar once over. You'll see it darken up. You'll get all that frosting out of there. The outside layer will cool off again. Your candle will be its original color. It'll look great and ready to ship. So while I'm doing that, you probably I'm probably not going to talk while I'm doing it just because you're not going to be able to hear me over the heat gun. But what I'm going to do first is I'm going to uh, heat the top layer, basically make that top layer liquid. I don't want to scorch it because that will affect your cold scent throw when the customer gets the candle. I'm basically just going to liquefy this top layer so that way as those air bubbles rise, it's not trapped, trapped at the top. It's got a way to escape. Then once I do that, I'm just going to slowly work my way around the candle. just gently heating it up. You'll see me using like a sweeping motion with my heat gun. That's just to keep from directing too much too much heat on one particular spot. Uh, it's only happened once, but you can't act, to me anyway, but you can't actually crack your container, especially if it's not a heat resistant glass, which you don't really want to be using anyway for a small candle like this. But if you get too much heat on one particular spot for too long, you can't actually crack the glass. 
and that's going to ruin your candle and if it's the only one you got left you're going to have to rework something with that customer to cover that order but i've been doing i've done this quite a few times you'll be able to see i'll just be doing a slight sweeping motion with this much frosting i might have to do do what i can the first round let it cool a little bit then there might be a spot or two that i have to touch up but basically it's going to go like this Okay, I've got that top layer heated up without burning it. Now I'm just going to work my way around. You should be able to see the little air bubbles going up here in just a minute. <clears throat> I can see them starting to form. You might not be able to see it in the video yet. You can see them starting to form there. We'll just let all those work their way up to the top. I got that side pretty good. I'm just going to work my way around now. See how they you kind of see those air bubbles on their way up. There's all that frosting leaving your candle. Just notice I'm careful not to stay in the same spot for too long. Okay, and that's basically it. Now you can see how my candles darkened up quite a bit on me. It's going to lighten as it cools like they always do. Hopefully that wasn't too boring to watch. I don't think I'm going to uh, fast forward it when I edit it. Just so you guys can see the whole process of what I do. Let's take a look at the top real quick. You see how it's kind of just melted the edges. You can see those bubbles coming up. Uh, this candle's wide enough to where I don't have to worry about too many issues. If you're doing a smaller candle like the 4 ounces that I make. You can actually, it'll look like you've got a, a big melted candle of wax with a little boat of stuck in the middle. And that can actually, you can actually pretty much remelt your entire candle, which you don't want. And if you do it too much, you can actually get your, uh, your wick to turn loose, depending on how you've glued it. And then you basically just have a little boat of with a wick floating around in your candle. It's not going to dry right. and You pretty much ruined it. So you want to be careful of that. But that's pretty much all we do to fix it. Okay, now. You might have seen this thing in my equipment video. I'll show you what I use it for. Bought this in the canning section at Walmart. I've seen them at Target as well. Probably a few other stores. Uh, these are using these are for used when uh during uh, canning, I guess, to move the jars around. Which is basically what we're doing now. I've got a hot canning jar that I need to move around, so let's move it just like that. And what I can do before I set it down, I can just lightly just lightly tap it on the table. 
free up some of those air bubbles. Now I'll just let that cool. And once it cools, all that frosting will be gone. It'll be good as new and ready to ship to my customer. Again, I'm probably... All right, so that was the tips and tricks video. Hopefully you found at least one or two of those useful. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks, y'all.